phylum Echinodermata. In this video, I will explain the classification of phylum Echinodermata. But before starting, if you have not subscribed the channel, please subscribe it. Now, phylum Echinodermata. This phylum is divided into two subphyla on the basis of organization of animal bodies. The first subphylum is Elithrozoa and the second subphylum is Palmetozoa. Elithrozoa is a Greek word. Elithros means free and zoa means animals, free animals. It means that this subphylum includes the free uh, uh, swimming animals or we can say the free moving echinoderms. While palmetozoa, it is again a Greek word. Palmetos means stalked. Stalked means attached to substratum, attached to something. And zoa means animal. So stalked animals are sedentary echinoderms. In this subphylum, echinoderms which do not move and which are attached to sub substratum are included. The subphylum Elithrozoa has further four classes. The first one is Asteroidea. The second class is known as Ophioridea. Third class is Echinoidea. The fourth is Holothuridea. While subphylum Palmetozoa has only a single class which is known as Crinoidea. So this phylum Echinodermata has five classes and these classes are placed are placed into uh, two subphyla Elithrozoa and Palmetozoa. Now I will explain the diagnostic feature of each class and examples. Uh, the first class is Asteroidea. Aster means star and idea means like, star-like body. Uh, in this, this class includes Asterias, which is commonly known as sea star or starfish. The members of Asteroidea have a star-like body and they are found on the ocean floor. They are creeping or crawling on the ocean floor and they are found in the uh, shallow water. Uh, secondly, uh, their body consists of uh, mostly they have five arms and the arms they are arising from a central disc. But uh, uh, there is no clear uh, distinction between the arms and the central disc. In some species, there may be more than five arms. Next is the mouth of the animal, it lies on the oral surface, the surface of the body which is towards the ocean floor, while anus and madriporite. Madriporite is the part of water vascular system. These two openings, they are present on the aboral surface of the body. And Asteroidea, the members of this class, they respire through a dermal papula. And their locomotory organs include tube feet which are provided with suckers. Pedicillaria, they are present and they are used for cleaning and capturing of the tiny prey. Pedicillaria, they are um, a forceps like structure or we can say they are a pincer like structure and they are used for cleaning of the body surface as well as capturing of the prey. And next is the development is indirect and it includes a larval stage. The larva may be known as bipinaria or brachiolaria. The second class is known as Ophioridea. Ophios means snake like. So members of this class, they have five long snake-like or whip-like arms. Ophioridea includes uh, brittle stars, which are commonly known as brittle stars 
also known as serpent stars the well known example is ophiodermma commonly known as brittle star another genus is ophiothrix which is commonly known as spiny brittle star so because of ophiodermma the name of your idea is given to the class it is its well known example like in case of asteroidia asterias is the well known example so the class is known as asteroidia here well known example is ophiodermma so the name is given as ophiodermma uh, about their habitat so these animals they are again found on the ocean floor both in the deep water as well as in the shallow water they have five long whip like arms and the central disc is distinct from the arms it means that we can differentiate between the central disc and the arms and in case of starfish the central disc is present and they also have five arms but there is no clear demarcation between central disc and arms in case of starfish the mouth is present and it is found on the oral side while anus intestine and ambulacral group are absent as the anus is absent so mouth which is the only opening of uh, alimentary canal it is used both for the ingestion of food as well as removal of undigested waste materials a madreporite the part of water vascular system it is present and it is present on the oral side of the body uh, of your idea members they respire and excrete through genital bursa tube feet are present as a locomotory organ but they have no suckers the suckers are absent in tube feet pedicellaria uh, which are the uh, organs for cleaning and capturing our, of prey the pincer like organs they are absent in of your idea again the development is indirect and it occurs through a larva which is known as ophiopluteus uh, students you can see uh, on one side i have drawn a rough structure of starfish and on the second side um, i have drawn a brittle star so we can see that um, the central disc is very clear in a brittle star and it has five long whip like our snake like arms the uh, third class is echinoidea uh, this class includes the most common member is sea urchin and the scientific name of sea urchin is echinus uh, because of the echinus the name echinoidea is given to the class echinus is a greek word which means uh, spiny or like a hedgehog the sea urchin body is covered with the spines and another well known example is clypeaster clypeaster is commonly known as sand dollar or cake sea urchin uh, first of all their uh, habitat they are found on the ocean floor both in the deep water as well as in the shallow water the body is around are oval shaped and they have no arms the arms are absent in the first two classes we have seen that the echinoderms have arms but in echinoidea the arms are absent a mouth is present on the oral side of the body and anus is present on the aboral side of the body the mouth contains specialized teeth and these teeth are used to scrap food particles from the rocks we can say that these teeth are actually the biting and the masticatory apparatus and these specialized teeth they are known as aristotle's lantern and this aristotle's lantern the specialized teeth they are present only and only in the class echinoidea in other four classes aristotle's lantern are specialized teeth they are absent they are not present in other classes so it is a very important feature of echinoidea 
and next is the body is covered by a rigid skeleton and the skeleton is made up of calcium carbonate uh, this skeleton is also known as test locomotory organs are tube feet which are provided with suckers pedicellaria uh, pedicellaria are present which are used for uh, capturing the prey and uh, cleaning the animal body they are present and they have echi echinoidea have stalked pedicellaria and three jawed the pe pedicellaria have three jaws and they also contain a stalk again uh, the development is indirect and there is a larva which is known as echinoplutius the next class is holothuridea the well known member of this class is holothuria commonly known as sea cucumbers so holothuria and the name is given as holothuridea uh, sea cucumbers the members of this class they are found on the ocean floor uh, and they are found in the shallow water and these animals they have large body without arms the arms are absent they have an elongated body the mouth and anus they are present at the opposite ends of the body so in the first three classes in the class asteroidea uh, ophiroidea and echinoidea the animal body has an oral surface and a oral surface while in this case uh, there is no such oral and aboral surfaces the animal has two opposite ends so mouth and anus are present at the opposite ends of the body and you can see that i have a draw a rough diagram of sea cucumber the mouth is surrounded by 10 to 30 tentacles the respiratory organs are cloacal respiratory trees they respire through uh, cloacal respiratory trees the cloaca has some respiratory trees and they are known as cloacal respiratory trees tube feet are present as locomotory organs and these tube feet they are provided with suckers in this class the pedicellaria are absent they are not present and development is indirect and uh, development occurs through uh, different larval stages some members have a larva which is known as auricularia in some cases the larva is known as dolio doliolaria and in other cases they have a pentacularia larva so development is indirect and it occurs through different larval stages and holothuridea the members of this class they are known as sea cucumbers until now we have discussed four classes of phylum echinodermata asteroidea ophiuridea echinoidea and holothuridea all these four classes they belong to the subphylum elithrozoa and these are free moving echinoderms all of them they are found on the ocean floor either in the shallow water or in the deep water and they are crawling on the sea floor and the next class is uh crinoidea and the crinoidea these are the stark echinoderms they do not move they are attached to some substratum the last class of phylum echinodermata which belongs to the subphylum palmatozoa is crinoidea crinoidea includes uh, sea lilies and feather star the genus of feather star is antidon crinoidea members of this class they are found on the ocean floor in the deep water their body is uh, cup shaped they have a cup like body which is known as calyx and this body is attached the calyx or the body is attached to substratum by oral surface uh, sorry by aboral surface or by a stalk the body is covered with five or more arms and these arms they have further branches or they have um, uh, projections which are known as pinnules and these pinnules they contain reproductive organs 
as well as tube feet the tube feet lack suckers they are not provided with suckers uh, students now you can see i have a draw a diagram a, a part of calyx and arm with the projections which are known as pinules and these pinules they contain reproductive organs as well as tube feet the mouth and anus they are present on the oral surface of the body pedicillaria are present in this case and in case of uh, uh, crinoidea development is indirect and the larva is known as vitellaria it is a barrel shaped non feeding larva so it was all about the crinoidea and it was about the classification of phylum echinodermata thanks thanks for watching the video and don't forget forget to subscribe the channel